or, a, or I could have done it to the computer. That would have been for sure. But anyway, we are continuing in the Rambam. This is our third class in the Pakdom of Paris Mishnah. In the Rambam La'am, we're on page Yud Dalit, section Beis, Vida. So we gave a nice introduction to prophecy. And now we're going to discuss where the position of the Navi is when it comes to mitzvahs. And when can a prophet alter halacha or not? So this is going to be a very big topic in and of itself of a prophecy. And we have to be patient till we get to the part that really interfaces with learning the Torah, which will probably not be today. Uh, but in other words, when we're talking about Torah, we're talking about Torah, understanding Torah, and we're talking about application of Torah in mitzvah observance. So does prophecy have anything to do with this? So he begins and says, Veda, you should know. Let's make it a little bit better. Shahanevua eina moila beferushe ha Torah ubehotsos an ver mitzvahs vishloshes rebitus. Nevua will not help in terms of explaining the Torah and bringing out new branches of Torah by use of the 13 attributes of, 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 of the principles of Yudgel Midrash Torah and Dreshes. Avol, but the truth is, ma shiyat, or sha'osa, different texts, sha'osa Yeshua Pinchas, bina ha'iyun v'asvara, Whatever Yeshua and Pinchas did in regarding to delving into the logic of what the Lacha was, Hushiyasa Ravina Ravashi was the same things that Ravina and Ravashi, uh, almost a thousand years later, were doing the same things in terms of trying to understand what the source is, how to apply uh, the, the, uh, the principles of Yudimomidos. And they, they could try to study and try to understand just like Ravina and Ravashi did in their days. It was no difference. However, Aval, Yisron Anavi, Upala, the mitzvah. But what was the advantage of the Navi in terms of actively being involved in doing a mitzvah? Okay. Im Tishal Allah, if uh, you'll ask him, uh, in what way does he have this difference? she, I swear by my soul, this is of the most profound principle. Our whole religion depends on this. In other words, a prophet does have a certain advantage when it comes to the commandments. And it's a very important one. But he ain't going to get to it, right? Oh, sorry, sorry. Now, in this version, it says now it's chapter three. Although, in my version, chapter three isn't for a long time. So there's going to be different versions of this. Okay. Vani Roa, Shazam, welcome, Roy Lavar, Boha I see this is the place that's fitting to explain this principle. The E. F. Shirt. And it's not possible for me to uh, to explain anything. Until we're able to uh, divide up the different types of claims that Nevi'im have for prophecy, that if they say they have something to do with Nevua, and if we can tell what's going on, and in what ways can they verify Hanavua, their prophecies. Shazak That's also a very big principle we have to deal with as well. By the way, Rabbi, on, on that point, um, does does that mean for a particular situation? Does or is it that be, every time have to do that? It's going to get to it. We, we're going to have to start from the ground up. All right. So we got to be patient. You're not going to get the answer you want tonight. He has to give us the whole context of everything. And then finally, he'll get to that one point. But we got to understand the whole concept. And so we got to understand what is a Navi? What's he for? And what relationship would he have to Torah? And he says, you know, I have to do this. Ukvar, where am I up to now? Uh, Ukvar. Shogubo call him on up. Many common people have erred 
גם מסי מספור מיודעים, and even a certain amount of well-known חכמים. He talks about many, and he felt, some say it's even Rav Sadja Gaon, okay, made a mistake. The Rambam feels that Rav Sadja Gaon made a mistake. Okay, Shem Edamim Benavshom, they think in their mind, Shehanevua Lotis Kayim prophecy cannot be verified. L'chol HaMishyach Esela, I don't know who claims it, Adososa Os Mufla, until he does a wondrous sign. Kigon Os may also smosh Rabbeinu Ziva, like the signs that Moshe did. The Yishanei Minig Olam, and you have to change the natural course of the world. Kamosha Selyo Zachotov, like Elio did, for example, when he revived from the dead, the, the, the son of the Almana, the Shunammite woman. Or as we all know from the great miracles, Elisha did all the show. And this false idea, this is not the main thing. Prophecy is not verified through Wondrous signs. Not a couple weeks ago, last week. Yeah. Okay. So, or, or two weeks. Ago. Yeah. Um, you have to predict the future or something. Like so that. hang on. So we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. But that is not about his prophecies. We will see. That which you find Elio and Elisha did miracles. They didn't do it to verify the truth of their prophecies. Because they were already established as prophets, as we shall explain. And they already well believed before they did any of these miracles. A prophet does not have to do a miracle for you to believe that he is a prophet. So why did they do miracles? They did it because they needed to. The situation warranted it, not because it was to verify any of their prophecies. And since we have a golden rule, so what he's saying is, Performing miracles does not verify you're a Navi. All it verifies is that you're close to Hashem. And that's what he says in the next line. And because they are so close to Hashem, he fulfilled what they wanted. As it says in Eov, from which a famous Chazal is derived from this Pesach in Eov, the tigs are Omer, and the one who says it makes the decree, the Yakum Loch, and it was established for them, for him. And that's the Chazal. Sadiq goes there, Bakarish Baruchu Makai. The Sadiq decrees and Hashem fulfills. Yes? Just going back to that point you said about the Nabi does not have to do miracles, but didn't. Didn't the Almighty tell Moshe, uh, he gave him a few miracles to do so that the people would believe him when he went back to the Abu Shrine? Okay, so let's just put that question on hold. That's a good question. We'll just put them on hold. Okay. Uh, and that was really Moshe saying, what if they won't believe me? You got to remember, first of all, this is before the Torah was given. We don't have a Torah to give the Jews instructions how to relate to a prophet. The Rambam is speaking after the Torah was given. The fact that the Jews would ask, okay, the sign, so we'll have to see, um, that was because the Jews were so enmeshed in Egyptian horrific culture. The only way from where they were to be able to accept any new leader would be on bases that are no longer existing in Yiddishkeit. They weren't the Jewish people yet. They were Jewish pagans. They were idol worshippers. Okay, let's know where they were. 
They were not the people who received the Torah yet. Once we received the Torah, everything changed. And the Rambam's words are post receiving of the Torah for Jews today. But for Jews in Egypt who were pagans, the only way you could have them believe that he was the prophet is something that they would expect to see. But that is not fundamental halacha once Hashem gave us the Torah. Once Hashem gave us the Torah at Sinai, all the rules came into place. So it's a good question, but it was before the Torah was given. And they were not, they would not have accepted anybody. They were on such a low spiritual level that uh, you know they, they needed something to have some belief in motion. So they had, they had a play to what they could understand. But, they, they but also, that does not become Torah. But they also had a Masora from Yosef and from Yaakov. Yeah, no, but, but, would say no, but the fact that he had to make the signs to turn the water into blood. Wasn't there also something about Moshe knew the name of Hashem or some... Name of Hashem, yes, fine. But, the, but he, he said, what if they don't believe me? And Hashem gave him three miracles to do. But guess what? The magicians Moshe were able to repeat it too. The Jews short. They never asked them for a sign. Oh, okay. It, he never offered the signs he to them. Words. He said to Hashem, what should I tell them if they won't believe me? But they did believe him. Uh-huh. Moshe misread the Jews. He thought they were so steeped in idol worship that they wouldn't believe him unless he gave them a sign. All right? Paros a goy. Good. Paros a goy. Another thing, another sign. Paro is a goy, okay? Again, we got to talk to the guy in the language that he understands, right? This is all pre-Torah. You can't ask questions before the Torah was given, before God revealed himself to the world in his almighty, powerful way. The Ramam is speaking after we have these revelations of God and after Hashem has proven that Moshe is a prophet and after Hashem writes in the Torah how I want you to treat a prophet, that's when we can ask questions. We can't ask questions beforehand. Okay, so now how can this be made true? Avotiskaya, but how can you verify Hanafua, the Mashin is Saper, if he's, as we will explain, in the different types of ways of verifying prophecy, which I'm going to discuss shortly. Uh, I think it's somewhere over here. Okay. The Omer Batchila, and I'm going to tell you for openers, Omar, the main uh, Jewish um, philosophy regarding Nafua is based on what I'm going to be telling you in the future. Those who make claims for prophecy, now he goes into I'm going to divide this now into two broad topics. One of them is He prophesizes in the name of idol worship. Oh, Misnabe Bashe. Or he prophesizes in the name of Hashem. Okay. Uh, one second. I guess that's the next uh, section over there. Okay. And the other one, Unavuras Avodasara, Techalik Lishnechalokim. And now in the Nevua of Avodasara, that itself is divided up into two categories. So he's going to be explaining four categories now. Two that he calls loosely prophesizing in the name of idol worship. And two are prophesying in the name of Hashem. What he's going to tell you is the first three are totally bogus. And the only thing you can believe is the fourth. So this is the, he's he's working slowly, methodically from the ground up. And I know you want to get to the good stuff, but we have to be patient. So first, the first two, Achela, now he's dealing with the prophecy in the name of Avodazar. Achela Karisha, the first type of that is straight and simple. Shiakum Navi Bayomer, a prophet gets up. He claims he's a prophet. Remember, he isn't really a prophet. He's claiming he's a prophet. And he says, Kochav Ploni Nasan Alai Rucha. A certain constellation gave me a certain spirit. 
has given has just overcome me with a spiritual infusion. It distilled some of its greatness into me. But Omar Ali and said to me, Avodo si bakach, serve me this way. O Korele bakach, or call to me this way, Be'encha, and I will be there to save you. Or Bechain im yikra b'nei ish la'avod l'tzela min ha'tzlamin. Or if a person tells you to serve an image of the various images, o l'talisma, or a talisman, that's a kamea, certain pig uh, figures they did to ward off, uh, it's called a talisman. That's, that's the Greek. It's such a word. Look it up. T-A-L-I-S-M-A-N. Oh, mean ha talismos from the different talismans. The yomer he said, "Zel diyane bekach." This has informed me as such. The gid likach and told me such. The tziva lelat savas lavodas al inyan ploni, and he told me this is the way we're going to serve it. Kamoshayos in the via baal in the via shera, like the prophets of the baal and the prophets of ashera, that they would. Uh, be doing all kinds of things uh, in that form. That is for sure out of the game. That's not nothing to talk about. Okay. Now the second one, where there's nothing to talk about. It's included in Avodah Zarah, but it's a little a bit of wrinkle to it. Shiomer, he says, Hashem spoke to me. La avod a lahori koach ploni le inyan ploni that I should serve or bring a certain power upon a certain object. Let's say it's let's say to the uh, to the sun or to the moon or to the stars. Hashem has told me we have to serve the sun, or we have to give power from the sun and give it to a star and give this this etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Just and and he tells him the yagid lahem inyan minyan avodas lapom shos and some avodas avodas sorry and he's basically telling you what common idol worship it is, but the fact of the matter is he's saying Hashem says this, and we know this commotion is yasad like the Torah tells us about this. Gam said that even something like this when he says it's the word of Hashem, he's like Hashem told me. That is still considered prophesizing in for idol worship. Because Hashem, this, this name of this Avodah Zara itself, Kolel, it doesn't matter, me, Sheomer, whoever tells us, Shehi, that this Avodah Zara, but doesn't matter who told you to worship it. Did the um did the idol tell you to worship it? Omishomer, someone told you to worship it. Or even Akadish Barhud Siva Lava Chugarim. Or even you say Hashem told us to worship it. Here, any one of these two categories that we just discussed, and we have two Jewish witnesses who can testify that this person is doing this, as it says in the Torah. Dina sheyahareg bechenak. The halacha is he is to be strangulated, as it says. Hashem says, "Vanovi ahu this prophet, o acholem achalom of this dreamer. You must. He shall die. And whenever we say regular misa, it's with chenak. Bein lono lahabit lasiachol nevua. We should not look or even attribute it at all to any kind of prophecy. Lono vakesh menos. We don't ask a sign." You're done for before we even start. And even if he does a miracle, an actual miracle, and it is to meant to substantiate the prophecy with things that are way more amazing than we could believe. Let's say he makes the sun sit still and he does it. You strangulate him anyway. You don't look at the He does actual miracles. Well, how do we know that's not true? Because, because what's he telling you to do? He's telling you to worship idols. Can't be. It cannot be. 
Shetam Kimus is not going to ask, so why does he have part of the miracles? Very simple. The Torah says, and that was we had a couple of weeks ago. Kimenas Hashem Aleichem Eschem. Hashem says, I'm testing you. Yes, he does miracles even. You're going to believe just because he does miracles. But Odin also, Hasecho Hamachsev Eduso Yosenemar Me Eduso Ayin Shiroz. Oh, this is a great line. And this falls back on what we said yesterday. Your logic falsifies and is a greater witness than the testimony that the eye sees when it sees miracles. In other words, what's more reasonable data? Talk about data. So one data is what goes against common logic. If Hashem says you can't worship idols, period. And the guy says, you gotta worship idols. Well, at, at black and white, you can't do it. You can't do it. Ah, you see, he does miracles. So what? Since when does doing miracles mean that the person is speaking on behalf of God? All right? Because we already know, logically, and what we already know from Sinai, we don't serve anybody but Hashem. A mom, she called him Soim, who brings everything into the world, who's unified in total completeness. In other words, we understand we understand Hashem created the world. We understand that all reality depends on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Nothing has any power with Hashem. That is fact. And if that's the fact, doesn't matter what the guy tells us to do, doesn't matter if he's able to do miracles, Hashem says, I'm letting him do miracles as a test. Will you believe what common sense tells you? Or are you going to believe what your eyes fool you into believing? So these are the two categories that are totally for us not to just throw it out. There's nothing to discuss. Finished. Okay. Yes? You can't say you can't do idol worship. What if it says you need to wear shut this? Okay, next topic. You want to go another five minutes? Let's go another five minutes. One, one more uh, yeah. question. I, I don't understand. Uh, well, it's almost like you 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 want to uh, commit suicide because why would somebody? I don't understand the logic. Of why somebody would want to do this? Like, what are Jesus they Christ, superstar! Uh, what did Yashka do? I don't doubt. I don't doubt that he walked on water. He did. I don't doubt he walked on water. He had the shame on the forex. They said the Gemara. He could do miracles. Like a lot of things that he did with his disciples were, were, were the ones who, who said all these things. Doesn't he matter. Doesn't it. matter. But the point is, the point is that the Torah says that such a guy, we don't believe it. It's idol worship. The fact that a guy does miracles doesn't mean anything. I know, so why is the guy doing do it? Because he can get away with it. He's testing us. You don't think we, we had false prophets during the entire first temple era. Yeah, a lot of them. And nobody killed them. Well, they didn't kill them. The king supported them. Yeah. How many prophets of the remember, Bible? Remember, remember. 51 prophets the of the Bible. The tribe for Avodah Zara was extremely Huge. powerful. Huge. They extremely they powerful. And there was power there. There was power. And they, they harnessed forces of evil to be able to do things. And isn't it great where you can get what you want without having to serve Hashem? Yeah. That'd be great. Have a good so time. there are people who did this all. Of, this was the major problem throughout the entire first temple era, almost the entire first temple era to go for that or not. And then and you see how Christianity, it's interesting though, the Ushka never really took off with Eden because they, they didn't go for it at all, but they took off with the Goyim. But there's no way we could listen to it. Okay, we're going to stop it over here. Much more excitement to come tomorrow. Much more. So just hang in there. We're just beginning. Okay, yes, everybody. Have an amazing night. And I got to start a race.